and this is the area that I'm going to install the radar right here on this little hump which it raises the uh, radar about almost two inches and of course I'm gonna have to modify the uh, navigation light here I'm probably gonna have to make it a little bit smaller the pole or shift it around somewhere and I got this bracket from Amazon and this is a four degree wedge bracket This is going to help the radar with the uh, inclination for four degrees. You see, it's a four degree wedge, smaller in the front, thicker in the back. And this is going to go like this right here. The radar dome will be sitting right over here like this. Somewhere along that line. Need to adjust it. So now I'm going to make some measurements and I'm going to start drilling some holes. I had to modify the wedge a little bit with a router. I had to open this little indentation here. You see where the bolt goes? It's sticking out a little bit. That's why I made this indentation with a router on the uh, wedge. So it fits perfectly in these areas here. I'm going to mark them right now. All right, you may want to look away. This is going to hurt. See, that's all the floor down there. So I gotta make sure there's no wires right under there. All right, and I'm going to remove this light here in the pilot house. Because this is where the wires are gonna be coming, right from here, through here, and then shooting the wire down through the, uh, all the way through that cover, all the way to the uh, carbon chart plotter. All right, so now I'm gonna drill all the way to the bottom very carefully. The carpet is there, but that's okay. I will just cut a little bit and that's gonna be all right. See, the diving knife works for everything. I didn't go all the way through. So now I'm just gonna cut a little bit here, the hole in the carpet. Bolts are going to go with the washer and a tension toward. So I need to remove this panel. Now that I removed this panel, so you can see all the wires exposed right there. From that hole to that hole over there from here. All right, now that I have all the holes drilled in, I got the wires here. I need to cut the wires. And later I'll show you how to make a connection here. I already bought the connection and I also bought a crimper for this. So we're gonna cut this cable and also we're gonna cut this cable. We don't need that many feet of cable in there. But first we need to mark where the cables are gonna go with a pencil. You see the mark there? All right, so this is the cable. This cable is too big. All right, so we're gonna cut this cable in half. And also we have to cut the power cable to the same length. And later I'll install this fuse block right at the end. That is very needed. Now here where I made this mark, and it's very windy. I'm gonna need to drill both dimensions of these wires in here. The reason I want to do here is because this is the best place that I can put caulking afterwards. And I want to put it towards an angle like this. Put it towards an angle. like that that's perfect right there so now the wire will go straight that way now I have to open another hole which is gonna be for this one and this one we're gonna go right over here all right that one is perfect both are done perfectly so now we're gonna feed it through the hole there goes the wire it's going straight that way 
Now we come down here and see if we can find the wires. All right, there it is. This is one. Now that I have it here, I'm gonna try for the wires here. There it is. Here's one. And here's, and here's the other one. All right, so the wires are right through here. And from here on, they're gonna go all the way to the uh, dashboard back here. Okay, now the only thing I have exposed is this wires right here. See the bracket will go right through here. And these wires will go under the dome right here. Now we're gonna flip the dome. I'm gonna connect it here. And make sure that it has the seal there, really good. Close it really good. Make sure it's tight. Okay, that's perfect. Now we get the power cable. And we'll connect it here. And also make sure there's a seal there. If you don't see a seal there, don't use these wires. Now that the wires are here, I'm going to put some tape temporarily to hold the wires through here. I don't want these wires to get pinched, so I want to put them in a way that they're not going to get pinched. This tape doesn't matter if it stays down there, it's going to be all right. I just wanted to protect the wires and not to get pinched. That's the important thing. It came with a little bracket here that I'm not going to use because the wires are going to be going down. So for now, what I want to do is temporarily put this piece of tape right here. Just temporarily. Later, I'm going to rip it up. All right, so all the wires are protected. Then I can install the dome. So this is the hardest part of the installation. You need to have two people, one inside the cabinet and another person upstairs guiding the bolts. But I have no help. So I guess I'll be using my assistant here. Foxy, are you gonna help me out put these bolts? Yes? All right, let's go. Since my helper could not help me, I'm gonna find another method. What I'm gonna do is I have a Velcro. Uh -huh. I'll put the screws in to there. This long one here, longer one on this other side. Now, how am I gonna hold it? I'm gonna use this Velcro right here. Don't press it too much because the Velcro will hold into this real tight. Okay, that's gonna hold the bolts. And I'm gonna do the same one to this side here. And I got this Marine Fast Secure Adhesive that I'm gonna put under the bolts. And I got this anti-siege with the dome that I purchased that I wanna put on top. I'm going to add some adhesive around the bolt. I'm going to start tying those screws in. Okay, that one is in also. I don't want to tie them all until I have them all in place. 
that one is in. I'm going for this one now. Alright, all the screws are in, very discreet, you can hardly see them. Very small amount of uh, exposure there are screws. Now, I have to secure all these wires here through the harness and zip tie them to it. So that way I can follow all those cables down all the way to the chart plotter and get some power also there. I also would like to leave some uh, extra cable up here, at least about a foot and a half, just in case I ever need to remove the uh, radar dome. Alright, that's perfect. Alright, now we'll continue all the way to the front. Now that I got the wire secure all the way to here, I need to connect the power cable to the positive and negative bar there and attach a fuse block that came with the unit. And this is the RJ cable that I'm going to connect all the way to the Garmin right here, chart plotter. And I'll show you how to make this connection since we cut the cable. Alright, so first of all, we're going to cut the cable to the desired length, cut it in a straight line. Alright, to make this connection, I got the uh, Garmin splitter. Alright, two of them came here. And that was very inexpensive. I believe I think it was like $15. Really inexpensive. I didn't know there were two in the package. When I uh, order it, I thought it was just one. So, so you have two of them. So if you messed up, you can always go back to the other one. This is going to be the crimper. This is to cut the cable. And always remember that this needs to be connected first before you connect this connector here. First of all, we'll cut this wire about this length right here. We'll go a full turn. Now we'll remove the rubber seal here, sleeve. Like that. Not very important to look for the colors. Now this is very important. What we're gonna do with this stainless steel wire here, we're gonna cut it down up to here. Okay, don't cut it flush to here because you're gonna need some contact with this uh, housing here, uh, stainless steel housing. So we're just gonna bring it back a little bit like this. And now we're going to unwind all these wires. Now you can follow the color sketch here and it's very important because in the manual and the manual brings side A and side B and there are different colors for side A uh, and side B and this one is side A so we're going to go with the side A colors right here described right there and for reference you can always verify with your RJ here cable make sure it's very straight and double check the colors again before you cut it. White orange, orange, white green, blue. So now I'm gonna hold them real tight here. And this is your RJ45 connector right here. And we're gonna measure. And this is where we're gonna measure at. We want the rubber to end up here in this corner right here with right there. And then we want enough wires to reach all the way to the front. Very important. So now we're gonna make sure this is up to this corner right here because that's what's going to hold that black rubber and the stainless steel is going to be touching this other stainless steel on the top area. I believe that's probably like a ground system. You got to cut them real straight. Like that. Now before you install this, verify your colors again. Because if anything shifted, you don't want that. You want all the colors to be the right position. Okay, they're all lined up perfectly. And actually to have better contact with uh, the uh, stainless steel wire, we want to bring it to the other side. Because if you look down here in the other side, there's a better surface to touch this wire. So we're going to throw this wire all the way to the other side. We're going to open this up a little bit. 
just toss it to the other side. Now we'll insert all the colors in. Make sure they're all lined up where they need to go. Okay, before we put it all the way in, make sure all the colors are right again. That way any cables didn't get crossed. Now you're going to see all the wires are going to come straight to the front. You can see them right there, all the colors. Now also you can see this black rubber is touching where it's going to be crimped right there too. Alright, so everything is perfect to be crimped. Alright, so we open up the RJ crimper and we use number 8. Number 8 means you have 8 wires. Right, we'll slide it in right through here. Alright, it's all the way in. And now we're going to crimp it. Alright, that's it. It's already crimped. Inspect it. And as you see here, the uh, stainless steel wires touched the housing, which is very important. And now the remainders, we're just going to cut it up. Alright, so now what I'm going to do is make sure my seal is here and slide this down like this now that it's in place I'm going to grab my fitting here that tightens the wire so it doesn't slip off tie it really good alright so that's not going to go anywhere if you look at the original Garmin installation it looks exactly the same same colors very important so now you know there's two sides the side A and side B the colors are way different on each side, so make sure you do it that way. Now we're gonna get the RJ wire right through here. And the reason I left a little bit extra wires because if you ever need to do any repairs or anything, you have a little bit extra. And then we're gonna make a couple loops here, like this. And we're gonna tie it in place with this other wires right here. Now before we secure these wires, we're going to connect the RJ connector. Okay, that's connected. We're gonna, and always make sure the seal did not fall off. The seal is very important to have in here. We don't want to bend this cable too much. We want to leave a little bit of loop there. All right, those cables are very strong here. They're not gonna be vibrating or anything like that. The uh, RJ wires are already installed. Now what I gotta do is connect the power cable. So this is the power cable. We don't need it to be this long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut some of it and I wanna bring it into here, leave enough access to reach to the negative. So I'm gonna cut it here for now. And we're going to have to take the sleeve of the cable right up to probably here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the insulation of the wire and rip the wires down. Now we're going to cut the access uh, insulation here. All right, there it is. And something very important is to place a fuse block on the positive. Now it came with this fuel block right here, a 7.5. Um, not a big fan of these little fuses. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my own fuel block 7.5 standard size because this one's a little harder to find sometimes and I only carry this on my boat. So if you ever have an emergency, you want all your fuses to be about the same size. Me personally, I would like to have all the fuel blocks the same type fuse. So before I start working on the power here, I'm going to cut down on the power source. Now I'm going to attach this wire to the positive. 
and I don't need that much wire so I'm going to cut a little bit since I'm adding more of this wire here and I'm going to use a shrimp wrap connector here all right I don't know where my shrimp gun is so I'm just going to use a lighter softly here I'll work the same I know this is not the way you do it but I'll work the same see a shrimp rack perfect if you don't have a heat gun available just use the lighter and make sure you don't warm up the wires too much make sure the heat is touching the uh, shrimp rack perfect and sealed I know some of the technicians are going to be complaining about this but I didn't have one handy it's okay if you don't have one handy you can deal with it this is the positive all right all right so this is where my positive is going to go so now I'm going to put the protector back on okay now we're going to go with the negative and the negative is going to go to this bar right here I'm going to connect the right and this connector right here I'm running out of room here so I'm going to put it right on top of this one here this one doesn't draw too much and we want to secure these wires here too okay that's a clean connection we got the uh, network cable here with the little loop and all the way down here I got my positive with a 7.5 fuel block everything is nice and clean and secure so that way there's no vibration or movement now I have to put all this stuff back together and also here I have to put back the uh, cover there for the wires I'm gonna place this back where it was all right that's all secure I can put the seat back seat where it was now what I gotta do is how to connect this light here find the same holes so that way you don't have to open new holes It's all done. Okay, the dome is already in place. It's all fastened. Very good. So that's not going anywhere. And the wires are not exposed or anything like that. Excellent. 